It's an injury update. All 30 NBA teams, we got big news on Mitchell Robinson as well. We touched on it a little bit yesterday, but definitely more concrete today. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I build Legos. I don't play with Legos. And I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball, on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free. We are available on all platforms. Operation 70K is in full effect. Uh, we're almost there. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't over here on YouTube. And let's get to that 70,000 mark. If you could do it, it would be awesome. We're here to talk injuries. There are a few of them across the NBA. There's going to be things that change, such is, the na- such is the nature of the NBA and injury reports. There's a new injury report that comes out every hour, sometimes even more in between. And things will be different. And that's what we try to cover as best we can. But that's why we have many, many shows during the day to try and keep up to date with everything that's going on. So let's start by taking a look at the Washington Wizards. We'll start reverse alphabetical order. Um, DeLon Wright is still out. DeLon Wright is still out. Uh, until the well, we've, uh, These dates that I put up are the dates that I have projected. And for a lot of them, teams give us nothing. There's no updates on any time frame, so we're trying to guess, and then the player goes past our initial guess time frame, and it's really hard to keep putting them out. So at this point, we've got DeLon Wright at the 18th of December. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Who knows? John Davis dealing with a calf issue. We're looking at around Christmas after Christmas for him. He has not been a part of the rotation because he's been a dreadful draft pick. Ryan Rollins out around until middle of December, late December as well. And Landry Shamet is out today with a rib issue. Maybe he's back tomorrow. Not sure. With him out, you do get a little bit more grace, hopefully, for Poole, for Jones, and for Kulabali. Dan Gafford was questionable when I created this, but he is no longer questionable. Daniel Gafford has been ruled out for today, so God knows what they're going to do. They probably they probably will start Bilal with Kuzma at center, which obviously boosts Bilal. It boosts Corey Kispert as well in terms of value there. Whether they're worth streaming on a Monday with 13 games, probably not. But I don't think that Gafford thing is likely to be a long-term issue. The Utah Jazz, this is one of those ones where I just don't know because... Larry Markkinen, I've got there the 13th of December, but who knows? He is back at practice. He hasn't played since the 22nd of November. This is a reasonable time frame for a hamstring injury, but we don't have an actual time update here. And they do play a Wednesday, Thursday back-to-back when he first returns. So don't be shocked if he plays one of those games and then um, sits the next one. I, I would think that that is um, a relatively likely scenario. They play the Knicks and the Blazers. So I reckon, considering they want to lose, that he might play versus the Knicks and sit versus the Blazers. That would be my guess there. Walker Kessler sort of out of nowhere with a foot issue. He's out for Monday. That's not ideal. Big man, foot issue. Ugh, yuck. Um, so we're back on the Omer Yurtseven train for some reason. So we're going to be doing that. A little bit more value for Kalyalinic. Probably not streamable for them on Monday. We don't know the time frame here for Kessler. Maybe he plays Wednesday, but again, a Wednesday, Thursday back-to-back is a little worrying. And then Johnny Collins is questionable for Monday's game with an illness. If he is out, honestly, I might actually have a crack at Taylor Hendricks. And I say that knowing I already have him rostered in deep leagues as it is. This might be an opportunity. Well, it's going to be a huge opportunity for Linux, but it could be a big opportunity for Yurt7 and Hendricks to put up some uh, interesting numbers. We'll see. Because that is three power forward slash center players who could be out. Um, all right. I don't know what that screen is. Anyway, let's bring it across. Uh, yeah, it is the Toronto Raptors. Otto Porter. You'd be shocked to know he's out with a foot injury. This man just doesn't play enough at all. He's always out. We don't really care from a fantasy perspective. And speaking of... Absolutely no information. What about uh, Christian Coloco and his illness? Apparently, when I questioned this at the start of the season, some said, oh, yeah, he broke his nose back in March. Uh, okay. Okay. Like, we are literally nine months removed from a broken nose. What illness is this? What on earth is going on? I feel sorry for the man. I don't know what's going on with him. But there is absolutely no... There cannot be any way that there was a broken nose in March that has caused an illness to keep him out in through the middle of December. What illness is this? Vagueness? And the further you get down the depth chart, 
reporters and teams don't care to provide any information whatsoever. We're going to have a few of those instances today. There's nothing on this bloke whatsoever. And so far, it's a lost season. San Antonio Spurs, yeah, we're looking pretty good. No injuries at the moment, thankfully. There are, I think, two or three teams that we're completely clean on the injury report, so we love that. The Kings aren't one of them, but they're actually looking all right. Alex Len is out with his ankle problem for uh, quite a while with that significant ankle sprain. He's out until around the middle of January. And then you've got Leaky Monk, who popped up today with an illness. I do believe that Monk is a 12-team league player. If Monk is out, then Herder does get a bit of a boost there. So does Keon Ellis and maybe Chris Duarte, but I would not be interested in Duarte, who is now out of the rotation, thankfully. The other one there is Colby Jones, cheese legend. He's um, questionable with a back issue. He wouldn't have played anyway. I hope they gate, give him a few more minutes moving forward, but doesn't really seem like it's something that's on the cards. The Portland Trailblazers, we've got some injuries here. We've got guys that have returned, but we've still got some. Uh, Jez Grant is out again on Monday with a concussion, but they don't play again until Thursday. So I would guess Grant suffered the concussion, where was it, on Saturday, the 2nd of December. I would guess by the 14th of December, 12 days later, he will be fine and ready to go. But who knows? But I, I would expect he's back there, while DeAndre Ayton and Malcolm Brogdon are both questionable for Monday. And if they don't play on uh, Monday with uh, knee soreness, nebulous injury reporting always. You would think they're back on Thursday. And then we get into the gigantic minutes crunch. For a shit team, it's very interesting because Aiton, Simon Sharp, Brogdon Grant, Henderson, Thibel, Kamara, they all have arguments to start. They all have arguments to play 25 to 30 minutes, and they all can't. So that is going to be a really, really interesting um, scenario for old mate Chauncey. The next one we take a look at here, we've got the Phoenix Suns. And we did get some interesting updates. And as I read this, something there looks very funny. And I'll talk about it in a second. We know that Grayson Allen is out with his groin injury for Tuesday. They don't play Monday. Would have been great to stream him in. But considering that Bradley Beal returns, you can, I guess, move on from Allen. The thing here was, is, is the Suns had that really sexy Tuesday, Wednesday back-to-back. And Allen had been playing well. But he's going to miss one of them. The team's healthy. So you probably can drop and get somebody else in. As I said, Beal is back, and I'm guessing he's going to be on pretty low minutes for the, for the time being, while Kevin Durant is questionable with his ankle problem. What I was laughing at was uh, Nasir Little. I wrote, you know, because I write the player's name, then I write the injury, but it comes up looking Nasir Little face. I didn't realize that was an injury. The old Charlie Kirk disease. Um, he got us a, a facial fracture and a concussion protocol. He might be 13th of December is the date I've got, which is... Um, the Wednesday app, but who knows? I, I, there's no real update on him. And the other one is Damian Lee, who it looks like he's had some sort of injury setback because his day has been pushed back until April with that knee problem. He would have been an interesting part of their rotation, but of course, at the moment, he is not. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Tickets, yes, tickets. That's what I'm here to tell you about. That's what Game Time does. We don't want to take, we do want to take the worry and the stress out of getting tickets. We want to take the guesswork also out of getting tickets. You shouldn't have to worry when you get tickets to your next big event, whether it's sports, comedy, theater, musicals, whatever it is. You don't want this issue of, hmm, where am I going to sit? What's the view going to be like? What's the price on the tickets? What happens if the event gets canceled? Because Game Time has all these policies and procedures in place to fix those issues. Event cancellation protection. They've got killer last minute deals. They've got all in pricing, the zone deals, and the views from your seat. You can go on game time, look at the seat, and just see exactly what you're going to see when you get to the arena slash stadium. You see the view. Perfect. And you're not going to get slugged with hidden fees. Everything that you get charged is right there on the ticket at the time you look at it. The most simple and easy way to do it. I know. I was going to say, I don't know why other sides don't do it, but I do, because they're trying to scam you. Game time, on the other hand, just puts it all out front. Everything exposed. There you go. There you go. There's my pricing. Take a, take a squiz. And you do have a squiz, and you have a look, and you love it. So download the game time app. Create an account and use the code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-B-A for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets. Lowest price guaranteed. Let's get back to the rest of the NBA now. Just another quick Operation 70K reminder. Hit that subscribe button if you are here on the old YouTube um, we're going to get there. We're going to do it. Let's go to the Philadelphia 76ers. There is only one name on there. It's an important name, but thankfully it's nothing too serious um, because we're talking about Joel Embiid and his knee injury. If he is out, they'll probably start Marcus Morris and I'll probably vomit somewhere and then Paul Reed will come off the bench and do some good things. Although last game, to the utter disgust of basketball fans, Mo Bamba played minutes instead of Reed. So I, old mate lying legend Nick Nurse, um, self-initialed logoed hat legend Nick Nurse, 
I'm just this this man. This man. Nah, mate. We really envisage Pascal Siakam. We are, are you going to play Embiid and Reed together? Of course I am, mate. Absolutely. It's definitely going to happen. Is it? Or has it never happened at all a single second this season? Um, shout out to your hats, though. Anyway, Embiid's questionable. They'll start Morris if that happens. And then Reed will come off the bench or we'll get annoyed. And the cycle continues. Let's go to the Orlando Magic. Uh-huh. Speaking of frustration, we just don't get updates from this team. They are the best and the worst team in terms of updates in the NBA. And I've said this a million times, is they will tell you straight away if someone is out for the game, the earliest ever. They'll tell you the day before on a back-to-back. They'll give the lineups out three hours before. And then in terms of timetables or what's happening with the knee, nothing. Marco Fultz, knee soreness, cool. Ever going to see this man again? No idea. Well, that's not true because we did see him practicing before the game. I've pushed his return date out to the 23rd of December, but honestly, it could be the 2nd of February or it could come back tomorrow. We just don't know. Wendell Carter Jr.'s hand injury, it's past the initial time frame for Wendell, but when you've got a broken hand, we're generally in that time frame. It's, there's a relatively clear you know, set recovery period. So if Wendell doesn't return on... Well, he's not returning Monday, but their next game is the 15th on Friday. So I would expect that he is back for that one. And then Jalen Suggsy Suggs is dealing with that ankle problem that looked terrific. He only missed the one game. He's currently questionable for Monday. I really do doubt that he plays on Monday. And then I would expect that he returns on Friday. And then it's Gary Harris and Cole Anthony. And then we don't care about those guys. Or Anthony, Anthony we do. Harris we don't care about as a stream option. The Thunder. Only one injury on that team at the moment, and that is uh, Midwest Dylan Brooks, Lou Dort. He's out with an ankle injury. I'm going to guess they start Cason Wallace in his place, and Cason Wallace will shoot a million percent, and that's all well and good, and he won't be good for fantasy because he just doesn't touch the ball enough. That's what I think they will do, um, and you can look at to more minutes for Isaiah Joe, but this is more of a deeper league situation, not any idea whether this is serious or not. Their next game is Thursday on the, on the 14th of December, so Dorta might be back for that one. Um, The next one is, this is the big one. It is the New York Knickerbockers. Mitchell Robinson having ankle surgery out eight to 10 weeks. That is a long time. Eight to 10 weeks puts him squarely and firmly in the Richie Benno territory. And that is the 22nd of February. Or as some might say, two, two, two. What do you do with, let's start with what do you do with Robinson? You drop him. Simple. Now, every time that I say this, before you do the hand raising, Josh, I've actually got an open IL, then of course you put him in your open IL slot. Of course you do. And when I say this also, if you are in a roto league with games cap, if you are in any sort of format with deeper stash benches for games cap, if you are in a weekly locks league, your bench serves as an injured reserve slot. So you can hold. But this is a man who is not probably one of your seven or eight best players, who's going to be out probably until around fantasy playoffs, close enough to it. And then when he comes back, he will be limited. That is not worth holding. If you do not have the... And you can put him in your IL and as soon as somebody else needs that spot, get him out. In fact, Mitch Robinson does not take it from here at all. There is plenty of reasons you can hold and I cannot give you every individual circumstance decision tree of what to do. But as a general rule, your first instinct on Mitch Robinson here should be, yes, I'm going to drop him. I just don't think there's any point in holding someone for 10 weeks to come back limited to be not that good when you're going to need that spot. Now, what about his replacement? Here is where we get Tom Thibodeau, because last season, Robinson got injured, like literally every other season, and Isaiah Hartenstein did not start. They started Jericho Sims. Now, that's insane. Now, my man Jericho Sims has played 25 minutes this season. No, no, not per game. Total. 25 minutes for the season. It will infuriate and enrage me if Sims starts, but we know what Thibodeau likes as a center. A man who stands there and jumps up and down and grabs rebounds. That's all he does. Hartenstein is very clearly the better player, and I think there was news from one Knicks reporter that Hartenstein will start. And we talked about this yesterday on the show, not knowing that it'd be eight to 10 weeks for Mitch. Hartenstein is a must-grab in every single format. Must-grab. Now, the problem here is don't look at what he did for the Clippers because Tom Thibodeau, Despite having success with Joe Kim Noah as a literal top five MVP player, literally top five MVP Joe Kim Noah was under Tom Thibodeau, being a hub distributing center, Thomas has gone away from going, nah, the centers just are never allowed to touch the ball and they must all be 8% usage or less. Which is in- the insane thing of his lineups. It's like, okay, Brunson, Randall, uh, Barrett, no one else touched it ever. Nah, nah, get away, get away. Even though Hartenstein can pass, he can shoot, he can do a lot of things. Will he change things? 
look at the man's hair. He holds on for dear life. So we don't look at Clippers Hartenstein, which is honestly a top 60 player in 30 minutes. We don't look at that. We look at him as being a probable top 100 guy. And if anything is different, we get excited. Now back to what happened last. I'm going to go on about this for a while because I know the questions are coming. Josh, last season that they split minutes. Hartenstein was injured last season. He was dealing with an Achilles issue. There was some concerns with you know, how Thibodeau was using him, and I still have those concerns. And this is far from a slam dunk. But he is an absolute guaranteed must-add player. Even if it doesn't work, that's not the point. The point is process. It's process over results because we can get kicked in the dick many, many times. But you do it. You don't go, to, I'm going to be smart. They're going to start Sims and start him. That's not good process. You can add Sims in deeper leagues, and I would. I would add Sims in every deeper league I could because he's going to get run here. But Hartenstein is the guy we add. Um, the next question I've got multiple times, which I was a little surprised at. Man, does this mean more, more for Josh Hart? Does this mean Josh Hart's a must-add? I don't think it changes anything for anybody else. Tom Thibodeau runs the most strictest lineups ever. His center position consists of 48 minutes from centers. So it'll be Hartenstein 30, Sims 18. Hartenstein 27, Sims 21. It won't be Randall playing at center opening up more minutes for Hart. It just... And again, unless the most stubborn man in the world, who's actually not as stubborn as he seems, but he is pretty strict with his rotations, unless he has a complete change of philosophy, this doesn't open up shit for Josh Hart. I don't think. Again, maybe they change it. Maybe they embrace playing Julius Randle at center. But it would be contradictory to everything that Tom Thibodeau has told us he believes. And that, again, is about process. Now, do coaches lie? Yeah, maybe Tom Thibodeau needs a TT hat as well. But again, this is what we have been told and it has been bludgeoned into our skulls for years from Thibodeau. It is really hard to go against that. So I don't think it improves Josh Hart. I don't think it improves DiVincenzo. I don't think it improves any of those blokes. What it means is that Hartenstein starts, most likely, and Sims gets backup minutes. That's the change. I think. I hope. We'll find out today. Emmanuel quickly is questionable. While well, Jalen Brunson got hurt towards the end of the game, he officially was listed questionable, but the reporter said he's going to play. So we've got him at probable. Um, if both Brunson and Quickly are out, then holy shit, what happens then? Well, it's going to be Grimes running the show, and then we'll actually see that Grimes is a good player, and Grimes and DiVincenzo value goes up for that one game, but that's just going to be a one-game thing. And then you'll be treated to some Juice McBride and Ryan archer Jackano backup minutes, because the back of the Knicks roster is one of the worst back-end rosters I have ever seen in my life. And I tweeted this out, but I'm going to run through it. These are the back-end players on this team's roster. Dylan Windler, Jalen Martin, Charlie Brown, Jacob Toppin, Daquan Jeffries, Ryan archer Jackano. Did you know that all those players are in the NBA? That is the worst bottom seven in the NBA, or bottom six. And then you've got um, Juice McBride and Evan Fournier there too. Their depth, horrific. It's horrific. Anyway, um, that was a long time on the Knicks, but I think it needed to be done. Let's talk Pelicans. Big Larry Nance is out until the start of January with a rib fracture. And then you've got Matty Ryan, who's out. Maybe he returns tomorrow. The Nance injury. Nance looks... Sorry to tell you, Larry. Nance looks a little... Um, a little washed. Unfortunately, injuries may have caught up with him. And that's boosting Jonas Valanciunas' playing time. Ryan, he wouldn't be playing anyway. So we don't worry too much about that one. Minnesota. Anthony Edwards. Questionable for Monday. If he doesn't play, they're back on Thursday, and it'll be Troy Brown and Alexander, Alexander Walker. But the other thing that happened is Jaden McDaniels has been upgraded. He's ready to return. He's questionable, Jaden McDaniels. So that would reduce the Alexander Walker and Brown value. What it probably means is that you just don't bother with any of that. And considering they're both questionable, there's no long-term solution or, or issue here with the Timberwolves scenario. Again, people got really confused or maybe misread or maybe I misspoke when I talked about Anthony Edwards, thinking that I was criticizing him for missing games for being hurt. And you could not be further from the truth. I am 100% always on the player's side in terms of games missed. And I will tell you every single time when a player misses games, it is injury related. It is not them sitting there wanting to jerk off in the locker room. It is not them lying about the injury set. Status. If anything, it is the team lying about the injury status, not the player. So when I, I have pulled back or I pushed back on Anthony Edwards when he came out last season saying, yeah, man, I'm here for the fans. I'm going to push through everything. But yeah, these other guys aren't going to play because you know, they, they don't respect the fans enough. Well, I said that's bullshit because it's not their call. Right? So when he gets hurt, tongue in cheek, I said, well, Anthony, I guess you just don't care about the fans. Get out there and play if you're so tough and all these other guys are weak. You're the only one who cares. 
It's tongue in cheek. I know he's hurt and he should miss time when he's hurt. It was a bad fall, a disgusting charge move from Pig Williams. But just be re- you've got to always be really careful about throwing those things out there. Like, I'm the one who plays for the fans. I tough through everything. I get out there and do anything. And then you don't. Like, maybe my point is not missing games. It's watch your initial words to denigrate the rest of your coll- colleagues. That's my point with it. I'm sure someone again will misread what I said. Jordan McLaughlin questionable with a knee problem or Jalen Clark is out until March with his old mate Achilles injury. What are we doing now? We're doing the next one because that is what we do on this show. In fact, no, we're doing this one because today's episode is brought to you by Fangel. As the weather gets colder, the weather is frightful, but the offers at Fangel are delightful. And then we look at the new customer offer and does it blow? Does it blow? Does it blow? No, it's good. It's 150 bucks in bonus bets if your team wins on the money line. I was going to try and do more of that song, but it, honestly, it's such a bad song that I forgot the word. So it doesn't matter. With a winning $5 money line bet, you get $150 in bonus bets if your team wins. So if you've been thinking about joining Fangel or singing Christmas carols, the choice is easy. You join Fangel and do it right now. The app is easy to use and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, futures, all that stuff. It is there. At Fangel, Fangel.com slash locked on. Go re- get ready for the NFL playoffs coming up. This ad copy says kick off the NFL season. I guess we're talking about the 2024 season. Fangel, an official partner of the NFL. Don't forget to gamble responsibly. We are going to crack in now. Who is the next team after Minnesota? We are going very, very slow here. The Milwaukee Bucks, Paddy Connaughton's been ruled out for another week with his ankle problem. We wouldn't be using him outside of deeper formats anyway, so cool. Jay Crowder is out until the middle of January after his groin surgery. Also cool, that just means that Leaky Beasley's minutes continue to be really, really strong there, even though his production will wax and wane. And then... Uh, old mate Chris Livingston, questionable with an ankle problem. I uh, don't think he's going to be an NBA player, to be honest. Let's go to the Miami Heat because there are injuries here that matter. Bam Bam out of bio with a hip problem is out again on Monday. So is Tyler Hero. We are, we've are we got to be getting close to these guys, especially Hero returning. He's been out for weeks, obviously. Their next game is Wednesday the 13th. It is a back-to-back, so I wouldn't be shocked if they don't play one of those games. It's against the Bulls and the Hornets. So I think that this 13th or the 14th is realistic for Bam and Hero to return. Highsmith also out, and then Kyle Lowry popped up as questionable with back spasms. So we continue the Huckers, Robinson, Richardson, Martin, and the other Robinson stream. And they're all probably going to go away when players return. But they've got great stream value now. You might get it again on Wednesday, and then it is probably all going to go away for Huckers, for Duncan Robinson, for Caleb Martin, probably for Kyle Lowry, for Orlando Robinson, Josh Richardson, and Kevin Love. They are the perfect stream team now, and it is all going to die in the ass, I think, pretty, pretty soon. The Memphis Grizzlies, we are very close to Ja Morant returning four games away. He's back next Tuesday. So Ja, I will see you next Tuesday. Marcus Smart and Luke Kennard, we've all got them returning around a similar time also. Brandon Clark is out until around March with his Achilles injury and Jake LaRavia's eye injury has him question. Now, LaRavia has been a huge disappointment this season. I thought he could be an okay player. He's been shit house. Um, every one of their recent draft picks, I think, has been bad. LaRavia, Roddy, um, who's the other one I'm thinking of? Uh, Zaire Williams has been shocking. Um, yeah, I guess Tillman's been good as a second round pick. Aldama's a late first. Obviously, Bain, but that's here four years ago. At the moment, it's just really hard to have any sort of idea about like, do we? They're gonna make. A, they're gonna have to make a move here because they signed Biombo and Jalen Noel through injury hardship stuff, and with Morant and all these guys coming back, they're gonna have to cut two players. I'm guessing that they cut. I I think they're gonna cut Ken Lofton. I think he's done. I think Snack Randolph is out of here. And do they just cut Noel or do they keep him around? And who else do they cut? There's no one else that really. Maybe John Concha, but probably not. It's just really hard to get any value streaming out of this team. And I do not... Eldama's fine to stream. I do not believe that Santi is a 12-team league player as we move forward. I, I just don't buy that. And then, yeah, any Biombo value or Rose value or bloody Noel value, it's just not going to hold on this squad, which has been a mess all season. The Lakers, fresh off winning the in-season tournament, have just one injury at the moment, and that is Gabe Vincent, who is dealing with a knee issue probably a couple of games away there, maybe the end of this week. His return does complicate things somewhat. I don't really know how um, how many minutes he's going to be able to get or what it does for guys like Russell and Reddish 
Uh, Max Christie looks like he's found his way into the rotation, which is a uh, a pretty sizable W because I do think that Max Christie is an interesting player, especially considering he's getting these minutes over um, Christian Wooden. He actually got them over Rui Hachimura in the last game as well, which was really, really intriguing. So um, that's something to watch. But when Vincent comes back, it puts a further complication on that. Don't think Vincent's going to have any 12-team value. For the Clippers, Mason Plumley out until the beginning of January with his knee injury. So Daniel Tice gets those deeper league value minutes. And then Musa Diabete, who had a chance to get minutes and then play it entirely, said, absolutely not. I'll see you later, my guy. He's out as well, so we don't really care much there. For the Pacers, we did get news on Andrew Nempard. They said he's week to week, so we're going to put him out for a few weeks there until around Christmas. So honestly, I haven't even mentioned this, and I should have. Timothy John McConnell is a must-add player in 16-team leagues, 14-team leagues, I won't go that far in 12s, but he's real close. If he gets 18 minutes a night, that puts him as at least prime streamer. Five assists, two steals in 18 minutes is distinctly possible from Timothy John. And in deeper leagues, you've got to add him. Nempard might be out for the rest of this calendar year. You've got Sticks out as well with his knee issue. Maybe he's back on Wednesday. There's no guarantee that Isaiah Jackson plays those minutes. He played 16 in one of them and zero in the other. Like, he's been all over the shop. He might get 10. He's definitely not a 12-team league guy, and it probably does help Obert Top and him being out there as well. The Rockets, only a couple of injuries there. Tari Easton's got leg soreness. Not great, considering he had that leg fracture. So we, yeah, we're yeah, we obviously not rostering him in 12s. Um, and the other one is Reggie Bullock with an illness. But yeah, I guess uh, the coach is sick of him playing. <laughs> hey, let's go to the Warriors. Gary Payton with that calf issue. They said they're giving another update in a week. Just rule the bloke out. Almost called him something very rude. He is going to be out, I'm guessing, until middle of January with that calf tear. But Clay Thompson and Chris Paul both were questionable. But now it looks like they will both play. They had an illness, which they must have caught over those last couple of days off. Not sure what they were doing during that time. But they are both likely ready to play. And we're obviously monitoring the situation with Chris Paul and his minutes um, now that this team is relatively healthy. Let's talk about my team, the Detroit Pistons. Jalen Duran is out with that ankle problem probably until after Christmas. Marvin Bagley is doubtful today. So we get a... I was going to say we get a real referendum on what Monty Williams is as a coach. Because if this man starts James Wiseman at center today, I will lose the 2% of respect I have left for him as a coach. I will lose everything, including my mind. I will not add James Wiseman. I won't add Marvin Bagley. This is actually literally... And just be watching for this. We don't know yet. The perfect opportunity for Asar Thompson to start. Asar at the three, Boyan at the four, Stewart at the five. Will... Um, organizational um, saboteur, Monty Williams, do that? I don't know. But with Duran out, and now Bagley out, we'll see. Monte Morris still out until January, but there's a real opportunity here for a SAR, or I, one of those guys has to start. And if they don't start, well, I will be, you think I've been hard on Detroit? Oh, holy shit. It is going to be crazy. Don't add Wiseman, for the love of God. He remains actually dreadful. The Denver Nuggets. He just needs a chance, Josh. No, he doesn't. I'm sorry, he does not. The Denver Nuggets, probable. Jamal Murray, headmaster. Ankle problem. Cool. He'll be right to play. Drop Reggie Jackson. The next interesting team is the Dallas Mavericks because we've got multiple injuries and some of them we don't have a full timeline on. Kyle, Kyle Irving? No. Kyrie Irving with a heel problem. Grant Williams with a knee issue. We've ruled them out for the Monday, Tuesday, back-to-back. I'm going to guess that Kyrie misses this week, but I don't know. Uh, and I think Grant is probably back on Thursday, while Josh Green remains out until around Christmas time with his elbow. So, Tim Hardaway and Derek Jones are your two number one priority ads, followed by Dante Exum, I believe. I would have Jones and Hardaway over Exum, but all three are 12-team league guys. And just in case, Derek Lively's a must-roster player and has been for literal weeks. Basically, I think since week one, since the draft time. And if you're still not rostering your league, get that thumb, Take it out of your ass, give me a quick thumbs up, and then go and add him. Derek Lively does not sit on waiver wires. Maxi Kleber also, no timeline on that man's injury. Not sure when he's coming back. Maybe it's 14th of December. I also don't think there's any danger of Kleber coming back and significantly impacting Lively. For the Cavs, uh, not great. Evan Mobley is out again. Maybe he's back on Tuesday. Maybe they just sat him because it's a back-to-back. And Levert's going to miss his fourth straight with knee soreness. Yeah. Mm. That bumps Okoro. This might actually give Craig Porter deeper league value because we saw that last game. Old Ports played 23 minutes with those guys out and it means Dean Wade's a deeper league guy as well. But there's no real update. And with Milk, Ty Jerome, who knows? This man injured his ankle, I think, game one. 
Haven't heard shit since. He just know that he's out. So I'm just going to put him out until the end of this week at this stage. No idea when he's going to come back. He's obviously not as good as Craig Porter. And I don't know what's happening. Such is the life of NBA injury reporting. The Chicago Bulls, the skater boy, Zach Levine, we've got him out there until the 10th of January. Will he be on this team? I guess. The 15th of December is coming up and you are going to have people, I know you're going to ask me this. Josh, a trade's going to happen now. Do I stash for trades? It is exceedingly unlikely. I can't remember it ever happening where a trade happens on the 15th of December. In fact, you will be very, very lucky to see any trade go down until sometime in January. And you'll be very lucky to see more than one trade go down until February. So this opening of January of December 15th for trade season is a lot of media hype. It's a real thing in terms of the contracts being available to trade, but nothing goes down. And I will be happy to be proven wrong, but history tells us that it does not happen. So I don't think that they're holding Zach Levine out until December 15th to trade him. I think he's actually hurt. There's no need for him to play through it. They're actually playing well. And there's no market for him. So I I don't think that's going to happen. We must roster Kobe White. And I think we must roster Pat Williams, who is probable with a uh, ankle issue. I'll just throw on the rabbit hunter there, Alex Caruso, with his ankle problem. I wrote toe, but it's actually his ankle now. This man cannot go a single game without a locker room trip, it appears. When he plays, we have him. And when he's hurt, we drop him. But I do want to just touch... I know I've gone for a while here. I want to touch on something with Pat Williams because... It's really important. You will rely on your fantasy app a lot. So I talked to Pat Williams yesterday in a waiver wash. I said, go and add him. Like, add him. And someone said, oh, he can't, man. He's game time decision now. Okay. That term gets thrown around too much. A probable tag on a player means that they are 95% likely to play. It does not mean game time decision. That, that is not an official injury designation. And the time you hear game time decision is an hour and a half before a game at a coach press conference where they go, oh, we're going to see him warm up and see what happens. That's where we get to game time decision nearly every time. But a lot of fantasy sites default a probable tag through to just saying game time decision, which is incorrect. Now, Fantrax does it, and I hate it. It's, it's wrong. So... Pat, I don't care that Pat Williams is probable. I don't think there's any risk of him missing the back-to-back, honestly, unless he gets injured on Monday. The probable tag, they, they put him there. They're pretty frustrating, actually, the probable tag, so they don't really mean anything. It means that he's carrying something, but he's going to play. Like it's, and it's officially 75%. It's in reality 95% that they play. But just be really cautious about reading that game-time decision tag because it's not a real thing. It's like when a if you'll see something that says day-to-day. That's not an official injury um, status either. And sites will often put that up. That's more better. That's better than game time decision because that confuses people. Probable versus questionable are very different things. Let's go to the Charlotte Hornets. LaMelo Ball. I, I, I'm waiting for an update. I, I don't know. Maybe I'll get one soon. I don't trust this team at all. I've got him returning around the 20th of December. But honestly, it could be any point. We don't know. They've got two doubtful blokes for today. Mark Williams with his back, which is annoying because he came back, played 20 minutes, and he's out again. Yeah, not good. We're adding Big Dick Nick. Because this, this re-injury here from Mark Williams means that we might miss some more, so we are adding Nick Richards where we can. Uh, I don't know how long it lasts, but we add him. Kirk, uh, we'll, we'll talk him in a second. Um, Nick Smith, the other one's doubtful, don't care. Um, Frank Nilakina, having an update on him in forever. So who knows, maybe middle of December. And the other one's Cody Martin. The lack of injury reporting on this man is insane. He's played three games in two seasons. We've heard nothing. What's, that, what's going on with him? What's the injury? When's he coming back? Not that it matters, but this man is a real NBA rotation player. A 20-minute-a-night guard for a team that has no guards. I've, I jokingly, haha, what a funny one, Josh. I put his return date as 2032. Because I, I honestly, it's probably more accurate than me putting any other day because I, I don't know. They've told us nothing. No one reports anything on them. I fear that there's a little bit of media... Um, I won't say fear because it's the wrong word, but sometimes with these teams, if you dig too deep or push too hard, they do weird shit to restrict your access. So media have to toe a fine line. But, you know, they need someone to come in. Hey, give me a one-day media pass the horns. Let me go and go, hey, any chance of telling us what's going on with Cody Martin considering he's played three games in two years and no one said shit? And then I get kicked out? Be good to know. Not that it matters that much for fantasy, but it actually sort of does. For the Brooklyn Nets, Ben Simmons. Happy to have been right, but also not happy to have been right in terms of his injury. 
We are still, I think, a couple of weeks away here. We've got him returning around Christmas. Don't be shocked if it's not until January. I think you, I, at the time I said you could drop him, and I think that's still okay. Lonnie Walker with a hamstring. I don't think he's going to have any 12-team value. I know he's there. Are, there's a lot of glazing, that's what the kids say, of Lonnie Walker in media at the moment. Man, he should be a six-man of the year candidate. They're really missing him. But what? it's that key example of what we talk about in fantasy. Because they'll say it and they go, yeah, yeah, man, he can, maybe, maybe he's six man of the year if he keeps shooting 46% from three. We go, well, there you go. That's just not going to happen, is it? He's not going to continue to do that. He's not going to get the minutes he was when Cam Thomas was injured and when Simmons was injured and when Cam Johnson was injured. He's not going to do any of those things. Historically, we have seen Lonnie Walker play and he has improved his game a lot. But all he is is a streaky shooter who does nothing else. So, no, he's not going to continue to do that. And the other one is Dennis Smith, who was putting up interesting numbers, and now he's out with a back issue. This man can't stay healthy, even when opportunities appear. His body is a little broken down, unfortunately, for him, and we don't need to hold through that. Two teams to do, and one of them doesn't have an injury, so bloody good news. That is the Boston Celtics, who are clean. And lastly, we go to the Atlanta Hawks. Jalen Johnson, we're looking at the start of January for his return. The prioritization of who to add is the same. It's Bay, it's Bogdanovich, it's Hunter, or Bogdanovich and Bay. We can throw those two in any order. And then Hunter, Hunter. Hunter is actually questionable with a quad issue. If he is out, then they're going to be forced to play AJ Griffin. And it really is crazy to me that he is not getting minutes uh, and he's behind Wes Matthews. He hasn't been very, very good. I said something about him in the preseason, and who knows if it's true. But he had some wild like Instagram posts about Beyonce is the devil, and if you listen to her music, you are committing all these sins. And I mean, how's that going to play in the locker room where he's being this very, very like uh, aggressive Christian about modern culture with a, a locker room full of young men in their 20s? And I, I, don't, I don't know. Has something like... I'm not going to say that something has happened there in their black book, because I don't think that's the case. But it's just weird that he was so good as a rookie, and now is just completely out of favor while Wes Matthews, 38-year-old Wes Matthews, plays 10 minutes a night. It's a little strange. So I don't know if he's, something's happened with... I'm not saying that they've deliberately not playing him, but did something happen with him and chemistry issues in the locker room, and that's if impacted his confidence and play? I'll put it at 0.02% chance, but I'm not going to rule it out. Um, Muhammad Gay, middle of December, and Kobe Bufkin, they're two rookies. Bufkin's out until January, but we don't really care that much there. And that's it. 30 teams, lots of injuries, lots of news. The big one is Mitch Robinson. The big ad is Isaiah Hartenstein. And then we go to Dallas. There's some other big options there too. And then TJ McConnell for deeper leagues for Indiana. Some really interesting ones that we can look at all around. And of course, if you are an audio, go check out the video side of things because we are doing Operation 70K. Hit that subscribe button. Let's get this channel up to 70,000 subscribers. Go and do that. I would appreciate you guys doing it, guys. We are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.